Hello, it's me again. Um, I decided to uh, push the boundary tonight, okay? Uh, because I uh, I just got another epiphany, epiphany, inspired inspiration moment, and I didn't want to forget about it. If I do this tomorrow, probably I will, it won't be fresh. Okay, so. We could just continue on, okay? Maybe for an hour or so, because I'm get, kind of getting hungry and sleepy. I gotta go to work tomorrow, so. Okay, so market saturation, all right? It's like this. If you overproduce so much so that at this price, you know, Demand is this, but you're overproducing it right here, okay, at this price. So now you will have to, in order to sell everything that you produced, you have to sell at this price. It's still positive price, but now this price is lower than the cost. You, so. Every time you sell this product, you're losing money. That's overproduction situation, like in Great Depression, okay? Overinvestment, bubble, economic bubble. What a waste, okay? Yeah, you're selling everything that you produce and price is still more than zero, like $9 when cost is $10. So you're losing one, $1 every time you sell this product. Because you produce too much. Yeah, people still want it, right? But you're selling at a lower price, a price lower than the cost. It cost ten dollars per pasta dish, but you are selling it at nine dollars because you had you just produced too much pasta dishes. Okay, so that's that's the uh, market saturation, Great Depression stock market crash whatever so you invested all this money and now you're losing money okay yeah housing market crash any economic bubble is like that okay you produce too much you invested too much people investors they invested too much overconfidence pride comes before a fall okay that's that okay pride you have too much, you are so proud of your product. Proud of your product, it kind of rhymes that way. So you produce too much, now price go down. Okay, pride comes before a fall. I think that's in Bible, maybe book of Proverbs or something. Okay, so yeah. Pride comes before a fall, market saturation, sure, whatever. But real saturation is right here. Okay? In a romance market setting, okay? Let's say you are a very rich man. Okay? So, you're very wealthy. So, you can afford to pay all these girls with diamond rings. Basically money, okay? Diamond rings. Gold rings, jewelries, all this fancy, what, cocktail dress, your penthouse, just like President Donald J. Trump, okay? Yeah, so what did he do? Yeah, okay, President Trump, he married who? Ivana Trump, and then he, she got old, he got jaded, so he divorced her after paying her some money. Divorce settlement or prenup, prenuptial agreement, whatever, right? So yeah, you have children, we had sex, we had fun, so bye. I don't want you anymore because you are getting old. So then he married a younger, newer girl, this actress in uh, Broadway, Mala. Mala, yeah, sure, Mala Trump, okay. Younger girl, newer girl, and then 
she got fed up with her, so yeah, she divorced again. And then she got first lady, Melania Trump, a model from Europe, it, from Italy, I think, okay? So yeah, that's President Trump, okay? Because he, he has a lot of money, you know? He's afford to pay this negative price. Okay, he's selling himself, he's selling his sperms. PG-13, by the way. <laughs> he's selling his sperms, but he's not getting any money. No, he's paying money to this sperm purchaser women. First, Ivana Trump. Second, Mala Trump. Third, Melania Trump, okay? Younger and younger girls, okay? So, yeah, it's not just President Trump, it's every man, right? You, you have a lot of money, you afford to, you're selling your sperm to girls, but price is negative. You are selling of your sperms, okay? For price is negative, meaning you are paying them. You are not getting money from these sperm buyers, sperm purchasers, women with their uh, wombs and their vaginas and their eggs, okay? You are selling your sperms, but you don't, you're not getting any money. Girls don't want sperms, okay? So you bribe them, you give them money so that they take your sperms into their vaginas, okay? Their vaginal space, all right? So yeah, it's a negative price, okay? Now, but no matter how rich, rich, wealthy a person is, no matter how more willing you are to buy all these diamond rings and gold jewelries, cocktail dresses, penthouse, apartment, whatever, houses, beaches, yachts, private jets, you reach this market saturation. Why? Because not every woman on this planet, and thank goodness, is materialistic. There are some good girls, okay? There's some good girls in the world who would not sell out, like President Trump's wives or ex-wives or President Trump's mistresses, his concubines or Harvey Weinstein's actresses and models who ever had sex with her, him or his wife. Yeah, they were sellouts, right? Harlem sellouts, Manhattan sellouts, Manhattan whores, high class whores, Manhattan sluts, Hollywood sluts, Hollywood whores, Hollywood prostitutes. Not every girl is like that. And thank goodness for that. Okay? Some girls are nice. They care about ethics, morality, so there are so many women who would sell out like that, who ever had sex with President Trump or Harvey Weinstein or Matt Lauer or Bill Cosby. <laughs> there are only so many girls who sell out like that. Yeah, sluts, right? I just called First Lady of the United States a slut. Okay, so, uh, so much for my presidency, right? <laughs> ah! I don't care. Whatever. There are women who are not sellouts. Okay? So no matter how rich a person or man get can get, it's not like this demand curve go up and up. No, it levels down. Just like logistics curve, S curve, okay? No matter how rich a, a man get, can get, it doesn't, this demand curve doesn't go to infinite. No, it levels down. Why? Because there are women who are sellouts, who are whores, sluts, who just want money, but there are also women who don't sell out. Women who are not slutty. Women who are not sluttish. Good girls. There are good girls in this world. 
okay? Who care about ethics, morality, and so not every woman want to have sex with President Trump or Harvey Weinstein or Matt Lauer. There are women who actually care about morality or ethics. Okay? So yeah, there are only so many women who are slutty, sluttish, whorish, prostitutish. All those women who ever had sex with President Trump, Matt Lauer, or Harvey Weinstein. Okay? Not every girl are like that. Okay? This is a market saturation right there. In a romance market setting, okay? So, there are girls who would not have sex with this man no matter how rich he is. We have nuns. Okay? Or monogamous married woman. Or just some woman who object Maybe a woman who's very liberal. She hates all rich people. Okay? No matter how rich this guy is, there are some girls who never have sex with him. Oh, if this woman is very old or very sickly, yeah, then she doesn't want to have sex with anybody, period. Okay? Or maybe this woman is very rich and powerful herself. Okay. Yeah, market saturation, okay? So yeah, it's this horizontal li line at, at the back, that's market saturation, okay? You sell pasta, right? Some people just don't like pasta, maybe. So no matter how lower, how much lower your your pr you price your pasta's price tag, there will be people who don't want your pasta, period. No matter how low the price it gets. No matter how low you price your pasta. There will be people who just don't want your pasta, period. Maybe your enemies. Maybe who are people who are allergic to your ingredients. Okay, you put some meat in your pasta, Maybe some people are vegetarians or vegans, okay? So yeah, market saturation, okay? I think that's all I have to say. Okay, I, it's been only 13 minutes, but uh, it's kind of important concept, all right? Oh boy. We're gonna take a break and we'll see if there's anything more to say about this, okay? Alright. Maybe over Great Depression, maybe. Okay. Economic bubble, maybe. Yeah, we'll take a break.
Okay, we are back and um, let's take a break from economics by talking about something else. So, I learned about business um, in law school <laughs> because uh, I took a lot of like business related law classes like lawyer. So I went to law school after I Okay, I was in the U.S. Army, okay, and then when I was in the U.S. Army, I studied for LSAT. Actually, I studied for LSAT when I was a computer programmer before I joined the U.S. Army, okay, because President Obama and Vice President Joe Biden, they inspired me to be a politician and to go to law school, to be a politician, okay, because first time ever, at the time, was I, I was kind of liberal. I, I was living in California as a full-time pro computer programmer in California, Los Angeles. And um, also I was uh, making a movie, okay? So I was in California, so I get influenced by this external environment, okay? So I was kind of liberal that, back then, okay? Now I'm kind of conservative, kind of. Okay. So, it was like 2006, 2007, whatever, right? So I saw, watch television, President Obama, Vice President Joe Biden, they were running for presidency for the first time. So if, it's before they, they became president and vice president, okay? Mr. Obama, Mr. Senator Obama, Senator Joe Biden, okay? So they were very inspiring very inspiring uh, because they seem like very good people at least the intention was good so i real i thought oh man look at this senator barack obama and senator joe biden good people caring people and being a big time politician and they're both lawyers okay Wow, maybe I should go to law school and become a politician like them. They are so yeah, they were inspiration, and that's why I started started to study for LSAT, law school admission test. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I didn't just apply to law school. I joined the U.S. Army instead. So there's some delay. Okay. But when I was a computer programmer. Yeah, I it was a software company, very small. About well, seven people, seven employees, including employers, okay. They were managing about three million people's data. Okay. It's like one percent of United States population, okay? So HR, human resources data. I was very impressive. And they dealt with some laws, okay? So they what we did in the Los Angeles, California company was uh, programming law regulation into computer codes, programming software, okay? So yeah, I, then and we have this big client, I'm not gonna tell you who, it's a household name, okay? Big international corporation, okay? That was one of our clients back then, okay? Probably still is. And they had this in-house lawyers and they say, oh, you're interpreter, you pro computer programmers, we are lawyers, in-house lawyers of this big international corporation, you know. We, we pay you money, we are your boss, and I'm your in-house lawyer, I'm, I'm in-house lawyer of your, your client corporation, and I think you're, you programmed it all wrong. You are just computer programmers. Your interpretation of law is wrong. We disagreed, okay? So what I did was I wrote a paper, white paper, okay? Yeah, no, our interpretation, the way we program this law into this software product is correct. You, in-house lawyer, seasoned, like decades old experience as a lawyer, in-house lawyer of this big mega international corporation, you are still wrong. 
okay so i have that david's spirit okay fighting against this big giant goliath okay so, because it doesn't carry me to me it carries no weight you all your decades of experience your age your college degree your license it carries no weight to me why you're still a human being you can be wrong okay so I logically anal analyzed this legal arguments, statutes, our programming algorithm. Okay, because it was like this: it's human resources. Okay, yeah, uh, you, yeah. It's, I don't want to go into detail because I don't want to reveal my previous employer, their identity or my cli the former client's identity. I don't want to reveal that. So. And so we called the governmental agency and it turned out that our interpretation was correct and that in-house lawyer was wrong in this legal interpretation, okay? Even before I took LSAT, even before I put my foot on the doorstep of a law school, I defeated not one, but three lawyers, seasoned, they went to law school, they've been lawyering for decades. Big law firm, small boutique law firm. Yeah, they all sided with that in-house lawyer, okay? I defeated three lawyers even before I went to law school, even before I took LSAT, okay? In this legal argument. You call the governmental agency, hey, is our interpretation correct or de their interpretation correct? They said our interpretation correct because it's a fairer way, more fair way. Because I believe in law. I believe the Congress is doing their job. Sometimes, yeah, people accuse Congress of not doing their job. They are doing nothing, inaction. But sometimes, inaction is better than action. Okay? Oh, legalize gay marriage. No, we are not going to do anything. Okay? Sometimes, inaction is better. Status quo is better than action. Okay? And Congress, I think, is working just fine. Okay? You have a balanced system. Conservatives, Democrats, conservatives on the right, and Republicans, Democrats, liberals on the left. I think it's a very, very balanced system. I think it's working very well. Congress, okay? U.S. Congress. Sometimes doing nothing is better than doing something wrong, okay? So, yeah, yeah, I believe in law, the integrity of United States statutes, so I thought the good right way, correct way to interpret this statute is to, yeah, fair, just, balanced interpretation. And that's where we, how we programmed to the software product. We programmed the law into this computer program, okay? That's what we sold, okay? And this, this our clients, in-house lawyers, they were wrong other two other lawyers they were wrong too that was the end of the story okay Whew. anyways why are we talking about this we are we're taking a break okay so okay so i then i joined the u.s army because i need some brain break i need to take some brain break in the U.S. Army, I jo joined as a enlisted junior enlisted soldier, so uh, it's all physical labor. So, yeah. So, okay, I take a break in the brain department. So now let's move the muscle. So that's what I did for four years. Okay. Then I I was in studying because I wanted to go to law school. So because I was inspired by President Obama and Vice President Biden. Because I thought, oh, wow, good people can be a politician, big-time politician, by going to law school. So, yeah, okay, I'm a good person. I'll, then let's be a politician, just like President Obama and Vice President Joe Biden. They all used to be my role models, okay? So I joined, joined the U.S. Army, then I became very conservative. <laughs> okay. So when I was in the U.S. Army, yeah, President Barack Obama, became the president, he got elected. I did not vote for him, by the way. I voted for Mr. Ralph Nader, okay, or Green Party, okay? 
Yeah, so President Obama vice Joseph or well, Joe Biden they become president vice president when I was in the US Army. Okay. So I was their employee, okay? When I was in US Army. And they started to make changes like oh gay marriage and then I was stationed in the southern parts of the United States, so I became very conservative. Back then, U.S. Army was very conservative organization under President George W. Bush Jr. Okay. So yeah, I got stationed in the southern parts of the United States, American South. So I became very conservative because I got influenced by the environment. Okay. And then I went to law school in the Midwest, okay. When I was in law school, yeah, I took a lot of business law classes, okay. Like secure transaction, investment protection, federal regulation of economy, okay. Partnership taxation, business income tax. Contract law, of course, I mean, that was mandatory. What are the business related classes? Yeah, accounting for lawyers, finance for lawyers, okay. Yeah, I took all those business related classes. I, I scored pretty well, B, B plus, A minus, okay. Because the law school that I went to, it was top 10 law school, okay. Yeah, it was a state school public school, but it was still top 10 law school, okay, because I've been studying LSAT for years in the army, before the army, when I was a computer programmer, so yeah, I scored very high. Not too high, what was my LSAT score? Something like 172, 171 out of 180, it's like 97 percentile, I was top 3 percent of all this LSAT exam takers so yeah i got into top 10 law school okay with scholarship and plus i had also had this gi bill post 9 11 gi bill and yellow ribbon program so yeah uh i was very blessed okay but when i was in the army it was not easy okay u.s army is not easy okay I mean, I was not a range of special forces, though I tried, it was still very hard, okay? We deployed to Afghanistan, and Afghanistan is a wonderful country, by the way, okay? The best rice and the best meat I ever, ever had in my li life was in Afghanistan by locals, because we are in a base in Afghanistan, and that we have this Afghanistan citizens who work inside the base and they had this Afghani restaurant blew my mind away. The best meat and the best rice I've ever had in my life. I still remember it. I know things about rice because I grew up in South Korea. Okay. So, but Afghanistani rice was far better. Maybe I was, because I was hungry, I was in deployment environment, I don't think so. It was the best rice I've ever had. Okay. Meat, best meat I've ever had. It was goat, goat meat. I never had goat meat before then, okay. There's this shish kebab of goat meat and rice, oh my goodness. Best rice, best meat I've ever had in my life. Afghanistan cuisine to me it was a taste of heaven okay and also we had pizza hut okay so I had pizza once a week you know just supreme pizza pizza hut or pepperoni pizza yeah I had once a week okay because we were working very hard I mean I was a male deliver mail I was in charge of mail room I was in charge of chemical storage room I was doing my own MOS you know military occupational specialty you know, electrician for helicopters okay yeah we are doing guard duty cleaning the 
bathroom one up we did everything busy so I was spending a lot of energy so yeah pizza no problem I didn't get obese we, we, I was burning all the calories okay and the whole time yeah we didn't have much spare time but the little spare time I had I studied for LSAT okay so okay one year deployment it was very painful for me because I had this constipation hemorrhoid <laughs> because we didn't get much vegetables in there okay in deployment in Afghanistan and it's very dry and hot so I had this constipation and it was very painful pain in the ass literally so it was very very painful okay so there was one year deployment and fortunately we deployed in an in an area in Afghanistan where this is very safe so we never got attacked and I never got outside the base for a whole year okay so I, I came back to my state duty station in America southern state and then um, I was there for one more year so one year for basic and advanced training US Army one year duty station one year in deployment one year before I got out in the back to the southern state duty station I'm not gonna tell you what state it is okay so it's my privacy okay you may be able to find it out okay because I'm, I'm running for president so a lot of my pr personal private information got public yeah, if you dig hard enough, you you will find it out. But I'm not gonna tell you though. Okay, you're welcome to find it out yourself on your own. Okay. So I get back to my duty station in southern state of America, and then um, I took LSAT, and I applied to law schools, and I got admission somewhere in the Midwest top 10 law school okay I got admission and I went to law school and I graduated in two years typically it's three years right probably I'm, I'm probably I'm the only person in United States history who graduated law school in two years maybe maybe I'm the only guy okay my alma mater law school was generous and kind enough to let me do that and I did it because I took two semesters of summer classes okay and in one of those two summer classes i took two semesters of arabic it's intense summer class of arabic language three months 10 credits or nine credits something like that and i got an a okay so because i always wanted to learn arabic and i studied on my own before i deployed to afghanistan because i'm interested in foreign languages you know I studied many foreign languages okay but I didn't I didn't quite get it okay when I was studying by myself and I went to law school I studied I took this some one summer class like 10 credits two semesters condensed in one summer class in three months and I got it okay so I did learn Arabic okay and that was very cool beautiful language okay beautiful language Arabic okay do I know Arabic I will show you okay so <laughs> Arabic is very beautiful language okay you know we did it in enough economics so let's erase all this let's have some fun okay I will tell you Arabic the little Arabic that I still remember, okay? Oh boy. It's gonna be refreshing. We're gonna erase. We're gonna take a break and we'll do some Arabic, okay? Alright. Arabic after a break, okay? We'll, we'll take a break. I don't want to lose my voice, you know. Oh, 
long day. Ah. Okay, so I'm telling you my life story. I'm sure you, you, yourself have some life story to tell. Yeah, tell, tell us, share it, okay? Isn't that what you just said? Yeah, share it with your brothers, okay? So, and sisters, okay? Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. So, we don't need this whiteboard now. So in the law school, okay, I, we, 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 we do some Arabics, okay? So, beautiful language. Smiley face. It's actually Arabic character. I think it's called Ta, T. Standalone version and, you know, connected version is like this. I with two eyes, okay? Beautiful, beautiful language. And you have single-eyed monster. Still smiling, but your single-eyed monster is N, noon. So this is T, and this is N, okay? Noon. Interestingly enough, noon, N-U-N, in Korean, Korean language it means I. Okay, so and 
In Arabic, it's called noon, n, okay? Noon. Okay? In Korean, noon means eye, eyeball, eye, okay? And the connected version of this noon is, looks like eye, eye, okay? <laughs> Funny, huh? Yeah, you have a, you have Aleph, which is like A, which is vert, just vertical line. Connected version of that is like this. Okay. Um. You see? Maybe not. Ah, right. I I forgot. Okay. Maybe not. Because. L, A, L, it's like the, it's like article, definite article, okay, so, I think Allah, uh, how do, how do you spell Allah, I think it, this Aleph, A, I think it's, it doesn't connect to anything, okay, so, for Lam, it's like L, so, I think Allah, the way to spell it is something, you have A, you have L, Lam, Okay. Allah. Something like, something like this. Ah, I don't remember how to spell Allah. God. It's been a long time, okay? So, ah, boy. Of course, you have meme, which is like M. It kind of looks like this. Something like this, okay? It's like, it looks like standalone version, looks like the bean sprout or fiddlehead. Okay, meme. Okay. And connected version is like something like something like this, okay? I forgot, okay? And what is S? S looks like something like wave. So, something like this, okay? I, I forgot, okay, uh, and you have Sha, you have three dots above it, something like that. I forgot, okay. What is B, Ba? It's like this. Something like this, okay. Connected version is like this. One dot underneath, okay. Just one dot. Just ba, b. Arabic is a very, very beautiful language, okay? It looks like this pulse. Like beep, 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 pulse. And it goes to, from right to the left, okay? Arabic language is very, very, very beautiful language. So I studied Arabic in law school. I studied business in law school. I studied law in law school. And not only that, I studied dancing too. Because I was in the Midwest, okay? So there's the Detroit, Michigan, Motown. Sometimes I drove there during the weekends and I would dance there, learned the African or Mexican dancing. And I was the only Asian guy or only known black man, known black person in that dance club because all the other people were African Americans. And I learned how to dance there, okay? Yeah, I would dance with African American girls, do some dance battle sometimes. Yeah, you know, I had good, very good time there, so. My law school, graduating law school grade was barely, just slightly above 3.0. It was like 3.0.12 something. It wasn't that great. I come on, it was top 10 law school, so you cannot blame me for that. It was a tough school, you know. So I'm kind of quasi-elite that way, because I also told you that uh, before I came to Los Angeles, I was in Ivy League school, so I went to undergrad college, four-year college, university in some somewhere in the Midwest, another state. From the state, I went to law school, so I went to two different Midwestern 
schooling okay in the midwest after that i went to eastern coast to go to for a phd program i studied computational biology in computer science department there i learned many biology stuff okay also computer science too and um in undergrad institution yeah i start my major in computer science okay and as a requirement i took physics chemistry mathematics some statistics okay yeah So I'm kind of quasi elite. Yeah, the PhD program is typically was average year, six years, five years, seven years, right? PhD, PhD program. I dropped out after two years, okay, because I was not cut out for that. It was too much, okay. Oh, too much mathematics, <laughs> too much statistics. So I dropped out, okay, and then I moved back moved to uh, California, Los Angeles to become an actor because when I was in PhD program, I wanted to be a singer. So I wanted to be an American Idol, you know, so I sang my vocal cord out. So I injured my vocal cord back then. Okay. It's all healed up. It's all recovered. Okay. So it's, now it's all good. But back then I was singing Celine Dion, Power of Love or uh, Whitney Houston, I will always love you. I sang too much, so I heard my vocal cords. So I thought, if I cannot sing, maybe I can act. So I dropped out of this PhD program after two years. Then I started driving west from the Eastern Coast Ivy League school. Okay. Then I got a job as a McDonald's burger flipper and. Subway sandwich maker, McDonald's drive through crew doing the French fries, and then I got a computer program job, okay, in Los Angeles. Okay, so that's my story. Why am I telling you all this, man? Yeah, I'm sure you have interesting stories to tell, okay, adventures, some life and death experience, okay, so. About three months ago, two months ago, we had this earthquake in Alaska where I'm living right now. I thought I might die. Okay. I guess I was scared. Okay. It was a surreal experience. Something that I've never experienced before. What if this building collapses? So I was at work. You know. Ooh, that was scary. Maybe you had more interesting story to tell us. Share it. Yeah, tell me. Tell us. Okay. All right. I think that's about it. I mean, I, it's been fifteen minutes, and I'm getting sleepy and hungry. Okay, so I'm gonna eat and sleep. All right. All right. Thank you. Um. Before we call it a night, before we call it a night, yeah. So when I was in law school, I studied a lot of business classes. Okay, so it did count for my graduation credit. So yeah, good schools. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was talking about all this life story business okay finance accounting yeah so uh <clears throat> great depression right economic bubble it works like this all right so you have a company you have this pasta business your restaurateur okay and then um Your restaurant flourishes and prospers, thrives, okay? 
getting very popular, then people will come to you to invest their own money to your business. Okay, I'm gonna lend you is stock stocks, investments or loans, they all work the same way. They give you money. It's a money market. Money is the product. They sell money. And they get their principal back plus interest. Okay, this interest is the price of money. Okay. They give you what one hundred dollars and they expect you to pay back one hundred dollars plus ten dollars. That ten dollars is the price of money, money market, okay? So yeah, investors will come to you because they want some handsome interest or stock dividend. Okay? So in business accounting equation is like this what asset is equal to liability plus equity L okay what is equity money of business owners liability money of investors lenders liability your loan business loan okay that's your total asset it's either your money or somebody else's money okay yeah equity yeah it's, it could be your money or your co-owner of your business co-owners stockholders okay yeah liability is a fixed kind of like fixed salary it's like partners versus employee okay your, your business partners, yeah, they share the profit and loss. Employee, they never suffer loss. No, fixed salary, okay? So liability, business debt, fixed interest, okay? It does not depend on how well or how bad your business do. Fixed interest, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah variable interest, frustrating. But the concept is the same. The interest of your debt, business loan, does not depend on how well or how bad your business does. Okay, you have to pay principal, you have to pay interest regardless. Just like you pay a fixed salary to your employee. Now, equity owners, stock, stockholders, are like your business partners, okay? your co-owners. So, they get paid more if your business is doing very well. Dividend. They don't get paid anything or they can even lose, your, lose their money if your business is not doing very well. Okay? So, it's that concept. Okay? Accounting equation. So, um... If your pasta business, your restaurant is doing very well, yeah, you will attract investors so that they invest in your restaurant, branch out, franchise, you go public, IPO, you know, initial public offering, you get enlisted in that stock exchange, you know, NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange or whatever. Okay. Then your company name become household name in Dow Jones index or whatever, right? So yeah, like McDonald's or Subway Sandwich or Burger King, Kentucky Fried Chicken, whatever. Okay. Restaurants, franchise, international, international franchise, like Pizza Hut. Okay. Yeah, that's how you expand your business. You bring in somebody else's money, your investors. Okay? So yeah, they build more restaurant buildings, franchise branches in your state and in your country and then internationally. Okay? Yeah, so people invest money and they get their dividend or interest. Stockholder or lender okay 
Yeah, money market. That's how business is run, okay? I just want to share this knowledge with you, that's all. Okay, okay it's 57 minutes and almost one hour, so we're going to call it a night, call it a day, okay? Because I got to eat, I got to sleep, and I'm going to save my voice, okay? All right. Well, we have three more minutes left, so. So when I was in law school, I was very interested in going to clubs and for two years in Midwestern law school, I did not have sex. Did I ha go, go out on a date? Yes, but I did not have sex. Have I kissed a girl? Yes, I think I did. I did go out on a date, but I did not have sex for two years. How about when I was in the US Army? For four years. Did I date? Yes. Did I have sex? Yes and no, because I did travel. <laughs> so I went to some developing country, uh, you know, red light trip. And yeah, I had sex in red light trip. Mm -hmm. But um, why am I telling you this? Uh, just for fun. I'm sorry if I disappointed you, but I'm a man, okay? So I want to be honest. At least I can ask you for appreciation of my honesty. Okay, come on, I'm running for president and I'm telling you my sexual chronicle. Do you want to chronicle my sexual history? <laughs> or my sex life? Come on. Yeah. So, uh, the way I want it is I want to be the president of the United States without spending a single penny of mine or yours. We are spending a single time of yours, okay, either. I want a miracle, okay? I want to be the president without spending a single penny, okay? So, yeah, give money and power back to the people where it belongs, okay? And, um, sure. If it happens, you'll be fine with me. If it doesn't, I'll be fine with that too. Fine with that too. Because uh, I'm having fun doing this humanology thing, okay? I'm running for president because I can lead America and the world to save itself. Okay? I can exercise that leadership. That's what I'm referring to you. I'm not saying I will be the savior. No. It has to be you. You have to be the savior of yourself and your community. And I can exercise leadership to guide you toward that goal. I cannot save you. I cannot save the world. No, it has to be everybody saving themselves and saving people around them. Okay? I have capability, knowledge, and ability to do it. Okay? To lead America and humanity to their salvation. Okay. That's my proposition and that's why I'm running for president in 2020 November. Okay. Uh, so it's up to you. It's up to God. I'm doing everything I can to make that happen. Okay. So do you want to be saved? Then vote for me. That's the price. It's not, I'm not asking for your money or time. Just the November 2020, okay? Just write down my name, okay? Then I'll be your president, okay? And um, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, it takes time, it takes money. You have to drive to that polling station, gas money. It takes time to memorize my name, how to spell my name, okay? 
But that's all I'm asking. Because nothing is free. Do you want to be saved? Do you want your children, grandchildren to be saved? That's the price. It's a very small price. Vote for me in 2020 November, okay? That's all I'm asking, okay? And then um, I will protect you. I'm a very protective person. I want to protect you from Satan, evil, devil. All these toxic ideologies of gayism, sugar fetishism, ketopiosism. I will save you, your kids, your grandkids from those evil, marijuanaism, plastic surgeryism, all this stuff. Criminalism, okay? That's all I have to say, okay? Thank you. Good night. Bye.